Coming up tonight on Blitz, Bobby Hall back in the Metro, this time with Biloxi. District champ Pearl not looking to send him back to the coast with a win. Plus, Lions lurk. Tyler Town unblemished this season. The Chiefs put that 11-0 record on the line against that tough Raleigh Lions squad. And hello, Kitty. The Forest Bearcats travels to Hazelhurst looking for that first win there since 2009. The Indians had other plans in our Sonic game of the week. It's fourth and long with just seconds remaining. Get after the quarterback. Coach just called in. <laughs> the Blitz. Yeah. Live from the 16 WAPT Studios, it's Friday night. And this is Blitz 16. Here we go, playoff time. Out to Bank Plus Stadium we go for Capaya Academy and MRA. Opening frame, no score. Hunter Halsey says, not for long. Hits Jace Carrero, tack on six. Patriots with a 7-0 lead with 5.07 left in the first. Ensuing kickoff, coach goes with the triggeration. Pats will recover. And Halsey playing nice with Carrero. Duo connects again in the red zone, this time on fourth and eight. It's coming up, folks. 14-0, Patriots with the lead. They'd go back to the onside kick, but the Colonels would not be fooled this time. Going on, Jay Cole on them. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. No role models, folks. Don't say what you don't want to be saved. Taking it to the end zone is my man. Check that one out. All the way in for six is John O. Endeavor. MRA was just a little too much in this one, though. They win it 49-24 and advance to the MAIS 4A championship game where they'll face Jackson Prep next week. Folks, you are dialed into the most comprehensive Friday night football show in the Magnolia State. Welcome into week 13 of Blitz 16, brought to you by Blank Plus. Alongside two Bulldogs, one Georgia and the other Mississippi State, Ashley and Marcus, I am Josh Jackson. You know, Josh, I was down there in Hazelhurst last week and I learned a few things. They love Blitz 16. They love their <laughs> football team. They love Ashley's anatomy of the play. And they destroy people on the football field. They do. Did they do it again this week? Well, let's go to Mr. Game of the Week, Michael Fleet. Guys, undefeated Hazelhurst looking to make it four in a row against Forrest, but these Bearcats had a different game plan for this one. Game plan or not, the Indians came into this one looking to establish their will. Tribe strike first. Junior running back Tim Stewart goes Jim Brown on this one. Truck stick! 20-yard scamper for a score. Indians junior QB, Kwamed Stewart, goes to air it out. Can't find anyone. Back shoulders it for Malik Gray. All right, maybe it was a little underthrown, but it still goes for six. Indians up. 14-0. Three and out for the Bearcats. Forces a punt, and no one picks up the guy who just scored. Gray slips through the defense, and these Indians are on the warpath. Hazelhurst caps off the first with another Stewart scamper, and the kid shows off his moves for the camera. Indians up 26-0, and Forrest didn't register a first down. Second half, and things are coming up. Bearcats junior linebacker Stephen Means lays the wood to put the Indians behind the chains. That leads to a monster run by Forrest senior Tyvon Harper, and the Bearcats are rolling. Hazelhurst Malik Gray says he can't have that. Oski takes the pick 65 yards back to the house. Bearcats woes continue as senior Joaquin Kraft punches this one in to put the game out of reach. Forrest Peyton Rogers gets one more crack at the end zone, but it falls incomplete. Indians crush the Bearcats 40 to 0. It was amazing, man. I had to get behind my team. Had to put God for believing what my coaches had to do, man. told us to do. Yeah, had to put God for My offensive line grew up. Uh, we were very young up front, and they um, they started to understand the offense, you know, and got much better throughout the year. From a low-scoring defensive battle to 40-0 to in the playoffs, Hazelhurst knows they have to go on the road next week if they want to make it to a state championship. For now, we're here at Hazelhurst, Micah Fleet, 16 WAPT Sports. Yeah, Hazelhurst, uh, them boys are good. Again, the final score in this one, the Indians win 40-0. to We know Ashton Clinton has a potent offense, averaging 44 points a game so far this season. Mm, that's right, Josh. I got a team for the first time tonight. They got Hernando, another team that can light it up. Hernando leads 6A Region 1 in points scored this year, but tonight the Arrows shut them down. Check it out. Out to Arrowfield we go for some round one playoff action. Cam Akers and the powerhouse Arrows team strikes first. Akers gets the snap and does what he does best, powers through. 
it's like no one else is on that field. He jumps over his defender, slides out of another tackle, all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. Arrows take the early lead in the first quarter. But it's not just Akers who brought his A game. Darius Mayberry gets the lateral pass on this next one, makes one cut to the left, and he is off wide open field for Mayberry, who brings it to the house for another six points. PAT good. Clinton up 14-0 with three minutes to go in that first quarter. Hernando's quarterback keeping the Tigers alive tonight in the second. Robert Wilk goes long to Ode Wooten in the end zone for their own touchdown. Cuts the lead 14-7, but here goes Akers. Boom, right to Christian Johnson. Puts them up 21-7. Arrows start to pull away one more time just for fun, though. Akers once again. This guy cannot be stopped around the outside, down the sideline, to the end zone. It was 35-14 at the half. And folks, the final score of that game, Clinton can look towards next week. They win it big, 63-35. Well, no surprise here, plenty of plays to break down in this matchup tonight. But unfortunately, we only have time for one. So here goes the anatomy of the play. We're breaking down the arrow strategy on this play right here in the first. It's the Akers Mayberry duo, but there is no I in team. As you can see, he makes the pitch here. And Mayberry gets the open field, but it's because of Jordan Patton. Senior wide receiver in the red right there for the arrows. Makes that crucial block and then it allows Mayberry to do the rest. He outruns the Tigers all the way to the end zone. There you have it. Let's check it out in full speed now. Akers to Mayberry with the pitch. Patton with the block. Mayberry with the rest. And there you have it, Josh Ashley's anatomy of the play. Thanks so much. You know, Pearl shocked everyone last week taking down Brandon to win the district championship. This week, the Pirates look to take down Biloxi, leading the Indians a familiar face. How about former Madison Central head coach Bobby Hall? Let's head out to Pearl. The Pirates are looking to close the game. Our coach Bobby Hall looking to make it a game. Pirates up 21-6 at the start of the second half. Jake Smithhart dumps it to Jalen Stovall, and Stovall gets enough for a first down. Move those chains. Then Smithhart keeps it for himself and slides for another first down, and the drive continues for the Pirates. Smithhart is going to later fling it to Stovall, shows his ups for this impressive catch. Check this one out to bring the Pirates near the end zone. And from the five, Johnny Winston. He's been scoring a lot of touchdowns this year. Runs it in for another Pirates TD, completing this impressive drive and giving them 28 points to boot. But Biloxi would respond at the Pirates' goal line. Ken Gatta Harrell broke a few tackles and finally scored a touchdown for Biloxi. Much to Coach Hall's delight. He's happy about that one. All Pirates in this one, 38-13 is that final. All right, Brandon Bulldogs fans are excited and ready for action. Yeah. Yeah, we see you, folks. At the bottom of the first quarter, Brady Anderson airs it out to Jonathan Mingo. Mingo was not able to control it, but a pass interference call on Gupport. Dylan Brown gives the Bulldogs the first down. Later in the drop, Anderson delivers a strike to Bo Watley for the touchdown, putting those Bulldogs on the board. 7-0 Bulldogs at the end of the first. All right, now to the second quarter. Gupport mishandles a punt. Recovers the ball, and Lucius Tyson tries to make the best of a bad situation, but it ends up fumbling it, giving the ball back to Brandon near their goal line, and you know what they'll do from there. Brady Anderson aired it to Matt Styles for another TD, making it 14-0. Brandon would keep them scoreless. Final score, 28-0. All right, so Madison Central entered tonight's playoff game, riding a six-game winning streak. Tonight, they took on a Columbus team carried into the playoffs by their tailback, Kylan Hill. He's going to Mississippi State. You're going to find out why in just a second. Jaguars looking to make it to another championship game to get into the state title game. So they're looking to win the South. And uh, check it out right here from Columbus. This is Kylan Hill. And check this kid out. Breaking tackles. And, yes, he has speed. Picking up about 60 yards on that play before he's pushed out of bounds. They would have to settle for a field goal. A little bit later after that, Madison Central, yeah, they run plays fast. So fast, caught me slipping, and they caught the defense slipping as well. Gabe Short slips past everybody and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. 7-3 Jaguars take the lead. Fast forward to the second half. Falcons up 10-7. Make that 17-7. Hill again. This time the direct snap and he kicks it into another gear and getting to pay dirt. Falcons touchdown 17-7. Columbus on top. But anything you can do, I can do better. That is what Jack Walker had on his mind. The quarterback keeper right up the middle for the Jaguars. With and the a big run. 50-yard touchdown run right there. Final score in this one. Madison Central would get the win over my alma mater, 28-25. to 
good game, Columbus High Falcons, and good win for Madison Central. All right, now let's head up to Tupelo. The Golden Wave undefeated Northwest ranking having an upset on their mind. Could they get it done in this one? Check out the blue turf. Stephon McLaughlin running on that blue turf for 12-yard touchdown run. Braden Smith, he's going to be picked off by Greg Williams. And Greg Williams knows what to do with it after that. Check out the pick, and uh, he's going to pick up some nice yards, getting as much as he can before finally being knocked down. Tupelo would capitalize. Jaquarius J-Rock Williams with the 12-yard touchdown run. And uh, the final score in this one, Tupelo getting the win big over Northwest Rankin, 45-28. All right, time to take our first break here on the Blitz. But when we return, Bassfield looking for its fifth consecutive title, but they had to get past St. Joe first. Welcome back. Entering tonight's matchup, Riley had lost just one. Tyler Town, a perfect 11 and 0. So, in order for the Chiefs to win a 3A crown, they'll have to go 15 and 0. Riley was leading 14-0 in the second quarter when we got to the game. Zarius Keys ran around the right end for a nice 10-yard gain here. I'm assuming that would be a first down. Two plays later, Justin Gamage hits Chris Mathis for a 20-yard touchdown, and that would be a nice score there. Next play, Key scores on two-point conversion. That will put the Lions up 22 to zero. And in the third quarter, Keys picks up where he left off and brings a few people with him for this 10-yard game. The Lions stick with the ground game and Key scores on a seven-yard run. All of this is coming together, folks. They pull off the upset with a 36 to seven win. Marcus, congratulations goes in order for Germantown. The Mavs won their first 5A district title just last week. Yeah, they did, Ashley. And uh, for their reward, they got Clarksdale <laughs> at home tonight. The Wildcats actually have a better record on the road than they do at home. And uh, check out the action in this one. Clarksdale, Stefan Jones is going to keep it on the read option. Turns on the burners, gets outside. And uh, you see him right there getting the nice block by James Banks and getting into the end zone for the touchdown. That's six. A little bit later, Wildcats, after they scored on their first play, the Mavericks would respond. This is what you call your old-fashioned pick six by Jarrell Wilder. A little bit later on, towards the end of the second quarter, the Wildcats box the snap, but Jones is going to get control of it and somehow pick something up and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Clarksdale would continue to pad their lead, and they would go on to win this game over Germantown. Final score. 32 to 17. All right, Madison St. Joe hosting Bassfield in playoff action tonight. We're going to pick this one up in the third. Yellow Jackets up 42 to 20. The Bruins defense starting to clamp down Cameron Watson and a host of defenders stop Bassfield on this one. That would lead to a punch. Later on, Bassfield with it again and Jafaris McKins. He's going to get the rock and he knows what to do with it. Rips off a big game right there. Yellow Jack is in business and that would lead to this. A run by Ron Thompson and uh, he gets more than just the first down. Gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Bassfield all over Madison St. Joe. They win 58 to 26. Well, Mendenhall pulled off the upset win by taking down Macomb last week. Survive and advance, that's the name of the game tonight. It would not get easier, though, as the Tigers got LSU commit Miles Brennan and St. Stanislaus. So let's get right on to these highlights. Starting out in the first quarter, there he goes. Brennan drops back to pass, but he's forced out of the pocket. Throws one up to be picked off by Mendenhall's Justin Milton. It goes down there after the turnover. Quintavious Dampier will drop back to pass. He finds Akel Woodard for a 45-yard gain. Later, though, St. Stanislaus has a little bit of miscommunication on this play. It's going to be Cable Marlowe fumbles the handoff. Mendenhall's Christian Griffith recovers on that play. Let's fast forward to the second quarter. Mendenhall's Malik Bethia will take the handoff on the reverse. He gets the first down on that play. That would help set up this Graves touchdown right up the middle. Mendenhall goes up 22 to 7 after that, and they finish it off with a win. Final score tonight, 30 to 22 Mendenhall. And more action coming up, but first, here's some Friday night finals from across the Magnolia State.
Yeah, Bo Johnson takes home the final player of the week award. Let's go Tri-County Academy. Johnson had 209 yards of total offense and four touchdowns in last week's win. John Simmons of Bank Plus join us this afternoon in presenting Bo with his award. Congratulations, Bo Johnson. Well, for just the fourth time in school history, Florence has made it to the second round of the MHSAA 4A playoffs. Their reward, how about Tony Brown of East Central? Brown leads the entire nation in rushing yards, and I'm still going with Paul Paul primetime and my Eagles in this one, though. Picking up in the third quarter, Florence's Brad Dennis rolls out of the pocket and finds Wyatt Grantham for the first. Then, a couple plays later, Brad Dennis drops back and finds Ransom Ford for the touchdown, and that will put Florence up 17-14. to 14. Later in the third, Florence's DeGarrett Lee will take the handoff around the outside for the first down. That's Paul Paul, folks, and that would help set up a touchdown a little bit later. Florence up 24-14 to 14 after that TD, and they go on to win it 31-14. to 14. First time in school history that the Eagles have made it to the third round of those playoffs. How about Yazoo County? They shut out Moorville 34 to 0 in the opening round of the playoffs. This week they got to host Charleston. The atmosphere in Yazoo County full electric as the season was on the line. First quarter action, Yazoo County's Kenny Gainswell decides he's going to take the ball himself down the sideline, beating the Tigers defense and pick a nice stiff ball right there, kid. Getting the first down. Second quarter action, Charleston after moving the chains into Tigers territory. Uh, they're going to fumble the snap on this one. But Billy, Billy Kimball, he finds it, picks it up, and gets into the end zone 6-0 after that. Coming up after the halftime, uh, Kimball would take another handoff, follows his blockers, and walks into the end zone for another score. Tigers up 14-6. to But the Panthers, Kenny Gaineswell, said, wait, not so fast, my friend. This is still my county, and he's going to scramble in the pocket and takes one himself, beating the Tigers. Tigers defenders for his second score on the board. Charleston goes on to win 29-19 over Yazoo County. All right, next up, out to Madison County to check out Tri-County, as well as the Rebels' rival, Canton Academy. Well, Bo Johnson took home our Week 12 Player of the Week award. Of course, our award is a big deal, but today, Bo had his eyes set on beating Trinity Episcopal. Let's go out to Tri-County Academy, get to the action, the kickoff. Garrett Harmon takes it for a long return, but he didn't score. So what I'm going to do here, since we don't have anything between, I'm going to pick up, watch him, get past the runners, taking it all the way down. As I said a minute ago, though, he did not score. Here we go. Swayze Bozeman is going to take the ball here, takes it in for the score 7-0. He finishes off what Harmon started. Tri-County Academy is ahead. Next play from Trinity Episcopal, the long pass to number 13, Devon Fleming. And then to number 21, Zachary Sanders for the touchdown. That's going to come up a little bit later. 7-6 PAT was blocked to Tri-County Academy. And then Jacob Sones catches a long pass, sets up another run by Swayze Bozeman. That would make it 14-6. Tri-County Academy wins it 63-26. They're going to the championship game as scheduled for next Friday. Home sweet home over at One Nancy Drive in Canton. No one has been able to take down the Panthers this season. Canton Academy welcomed Marshall Academy to its turf. It'll be a tough one, but field goal kicker Ryan Lindsay starts it out. He kicks this to make it 30-20 Canton Academy in the lead. Up next is Keyshawn Clinton makes a nice pass to Patrick Sandridge for good games on that play right there. But let's go back to Lindsay. He adds three more points with this field goal. It's 33-20 Canton Academy. And the final tonight, they go on to win it 54 to 20. We're going to step aside one more time, but when we return this week's High Five Plays, keep it locked right here on The Blitz. Straight to the High Five Plays of the night. Number five goes to Hazelhurst, Malik Gray, who makes the turnaround catch. That is the way to go. Number four, Raleigh's Justin Gamage linking up with Chris Mathis. But look, look over the shoulder catch. Look right there for the 20-yard score. All right, number three goes to Charleston. Billy Kimbrough showing off some niftiness for the big score to keep the Tigers' playoff dreams alive. Number two goes to Hazelhurst's own Tim Stewart laying the hammer down early in the Tribe's win over the Bearcats tonight. And the top play tonight goes to Clinton's Cam Akers doing what Cam Akers does best. Literally running through the defense for the monster score. Those arrows, they keep moving on, folks. That is a wrap on week number 13 of Blitz 16. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. Have a great weekend. And remember, take some time to smile.